Well, hello everyone, and welcome to Zen and the Art of SolidWorks Surfacing, presented by the Demani Group. My name is Andrew Lowe. I'm a senior industrial designer. I've been using SolidWorks for almost 15 years now. Do rough surfaces have you on edge? Got a kink in your spline? Zen out and come to really understand how SolidWorks surfacing works. Using advanced techniques, I'll demonstrate surface modeling workflows that allow you to quickly and easily create the most challenging of shapes. Located just outside Chicago, Illinois, the Demonic Group is a full-service product development consultancy offering industrial design, design engineering, electrical engineering, and software development services. Welcome to another installment of Zen and the Art of SolidWorks Surfacing. In this installment, we'll be taking a look at how we can actually set up parametric G3 connections in SolidWorks. So SolidWorks supports uh, a parametric G1 connection, that is the uh, tangent relation in the sketcher, and it supports a parametric uh, G2 connection, which is equal curvature relation in the sketcher, but there is nothing out of the box that allows us to parametrically add a G3 connection. We can, while creating uh, splines, manually adjust the, the spline to, to visually look like like it's a G3 connection between sketch entities, but there is no parametrics built into that. However, there is a neat kind of hack that we can use to actually parametrically add G3 connections between line segments and arc segments in the sketcher. So to help better understand this, we need to take a more in-depth look at the uh, style spline tool in SOLIDWORKS. So I'm just gonna start a sketch here and play around with the style spline. So note that I need to sketch at least three points for the style spline to be generated. That's because the style spline is sketched between uh, points on the control polygon and not necessarily points on the spline itself. So here I have a degree two curve, and this means that I have two kind of control segments here. These are actually just referred to as, as lines, but they are, they, I think they have a technical term, but I just kind of kind of them control lines control segments, and then I have this control vertice that I can kind of drag around to adjust the shape of the spline. Now what happens if I was to increase the curve degree and I actually get an additional segment? So this is a degree three curve. So the degree is actually the number of control ultimate points. So one, two, three, four, minus one. So this is a three degree curve and I can keep increasing the number of segments and ultimately get more and more fine control over the spline. However, when you have a whole bunch of segments like this and kind of come a little uh, unwieldy to manipulate, so I kind of like to use as few segments as possible. Obviously, two doesn't give us much control, but you know, three or four it tends to work pretty well. So in these examples, we're going to be creating a parametric uh, G3 connection between two line segments. And I first created this uh, sketch fillet just to help kind of generate or dimension the size of our transition. So we won't actually be using this, this arc here, this fillet, but we will be using it to, to kind of define the distance between these two points via the radius here. So I've created a new sketch and I've actually gone in and drawn this connection. And we only have the tangent connection here because the line obviously doesn't have any curvature. So what we're going to do is redraw this and we'll start again with two spiral spline and we will select the line segment and spline and hit tangent. And then note that the control line for the spline is actually now fully defined and it was made collinear to this line segment, interesting. So we'll do the same thing over here. Well, oh, I selected the line segment. So I'm going to add the tangent relation. And we'll add tangent. And what it actually did was it added an additional degree of uh, freedom. It went up degree free three, but note that uh, our line segment was, was is now collinear and is fully defined. So adding the tangent relation kind of takes up one degree of freedom for the style spline. Now if we, we might be able to go back in and tell SOLIDWORKS we want this to be two. And we'll see it takes away that third degree, but now the spline is fully defined. So what happens if we were to add the equal curvature relation? So we're going to redraw this spline here. So we're going to create a style spline. Oh, that is a traditional spline. We want style spline. And we're going to create a degree two style spline. And once again, I'm going to, instead of adding tangent, I'm going to add the equal curvature relation. So that's interesting. Note that it added an additional line segment and both of them are fully defined and they both appear to be collinear with the 
line segment we made them equal curvature to. So we'll do the same thing over here. We'll add equal curvature. And interesting, so we now have both of these line segments are taken up. So if we were to add a equal curvature relation, it requires uh, two degrees kind of in each direction in order to have that relation be added. So even though we didn't have a degree four curve when we started, uh, SolidWorks automatically added those additional segments. And note that they are fully defined. It's simply the this vertex here, which can be dragged around, but because the spline can still be manipulated, it's not fully defined yet too. But it's kind of interesting to note that both of these line segments are collinear here. So drawing on this, what we can do is actually make a perfect parametric G3 relation by instead of using the tangent or equal curvature relation. So I'm just going to sketch these points here. We need to have a degree six curve because we noted that for the G1 connection, we took up one degree of freedom in each direction. In the G2 uh, spline, we needed two degrees of freedom. So in this example, we need to have three in each direction. So what I'll do is I'll pick the line segments of the spline. I'm not actually picking the spline itself. I will select the line segment and I'm going to make them collinear. And I'll drag these points back and I'm going to do the same thing over here. And let's make you collinear. And let's turn on our curvature combs and see if we do actually have a G3 connection, which we do. We see that very gentle acceleration. Note that the, the line doesn't have any curvature. So we see that the, the spline's curvature comb starts at zero here and starts ramping up. So this is a really nice G3 connection and we can still dial it in by manipulating the points. Now what happens if I wanted to make a parametric edit to this sketch? Let's say that uh, we needed to actually change this dimension from three to four. So doing that here, we see what the spline is kind of blown up. We have some really nasty curvature here. We don't know what's going on. And that just kind of boils down to the way that the sketcher handles undefined points in space. So at three or three inches here in our sketch, these points are currently locked in space. There's nothing parametrically driving the position of these points. So when changing this dimension to four inches from three, these points stay exactly where they were, and now the spline kind of contorts on itself. Now we could go in and manually drag these back to where they wanted to be, but that's not very parametric. So what we need is a way of taking up the degrees of freedom of, of these points such that they are fully defined. And the easiest way I found about doing that is zooming in and picking each of the segments in the, the in the row and making them equal to each other. So now they are fully defined. We'll do the same thing over here because they are equal to each other. They can't go anywhere. Each of these length line segments have to be the same length. And now when I make edits to the spline, it nicely moves around. Because those points are now ge or being driven geometrically based on the constraints that we have added. So we saw that when adding the tangent relation to the style spline in the sketcher, we took up a degree of freedom in each direction as we added the tangent relation. Note that the G1 connection takes up one degree of freedom. When adding the G2 connection, it takes up two degrees of freedom. So we still don't quite have that uh, parametric G3 yet. But what we can do is instead of using the tangent or equal curvature relation, we can manually set this up. And the way we do that is by making the control lines of the style spline collinear to the line segment we're attempting to bridge between. Now this ultimately isn't parametric enough because as we make dimensional edits here we see that the spline points stay in their original point in space. So we need to, some way of controlling that degree of freedom. So here we see the three different uh, line segments made collinear here, the three different line segments of the spline made collinear here, and we have that really nice smooth acceleration typical of a G3 connection. So how do we make that parametric? And the way we go about making that parametric is setting up relations in the sketch such that the points are fully defined. We can use the equal relation here such that all the line segments in the style spline are equal to each other. Note that as the degree of a continuity goes up, whether it be G1, G2, or G3, the visual size of the 
uh, transition gets smaller and smaller. So we need to, if we wanted to approximate a one and a half inch uh, radius fillet, we would actually want to increase the style spline, maybe have this to be about two and a half, such that they, visually they look the same. So to get that per perfect parametric G3 connection between line segments, what we do is set up the relations with the collinear to this line segment and equal, collinear to line segment and equal, and bam, we have a fully defined parametric G3 spline, everything's black, things will perfectly update as we make edits to the sketch. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this installment of Zen and the Art of SolidWorks Surfacing. Be sure to check out the example SolidWorks files on the Demani Group website linked in the description below. And don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. Happy SolidWorks Surfacing.